Alright guys, how's it going? Thank you for the thousand subscribers, very much appreciated. So I thought I would take a look at the Blender add-on called Tissue. Now by no stretch of the imagination is this a new plugin, it's pretty old actually. But I recently seen that there was a few updates, and a pretty powerful update to be fair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly review some of the features of the plugin, and then we'll try and create something a bit unique. Now first of all, let's go to Add, Mesh, and let's do it an icosphere. Now if I press the N key, I'll bring up the properties tab and I'll go to tissue. Now the first thing I'm going to show you is convert to a dual mesh. So we can see that we've got this icosphere here. Let me just turn on wireframe so we get a better view of what's actually going on here. Something like this. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert to a dual mesh and it'll give you a better idea. So you can see that it's given this really nice topology, nice and clean. Kinda like a soccer ball. Now, what happens if we do it again for a second time? So we start to get this strange kind of effect, and it's actually pretty much what I want, so I'm going to do it for a third time. And you can see that it's actually maybe trying to fix itself out. Let's do it a fourth time. Now, another feature that it's got, if you jump into the weight paint, now I have a problem with my graphics card at the moment, but hopefully this will work. We can generate a weight by the area, curvature, weight distance, or a weight formula. Now the formula stuff's pretty clever to be fair. Now, I'm crap at formulas, so user formula, I will just pick something, and we'll just hit OK. Alright, so we get something kind of strange, and I can do a contour displace as well, so I get this kind of effect. Now let's undo this because it's just a mess, <laughs> and we'll hit simulations reaction. Now what you can see here is, it's actually created a new vertex group, so I'll just quickly do something like this. I'll come down to tissue reaction, and you can see that we have a few options. So if I hit play, you'll start to see what it's doing here. It's kind of giving me this natural kind of curve using the formula, which is pretty nice. So I can actually take this data from the vertex map. If I jump into object mode, add in a modifier and I do a displace, I can actually use the vertex group, which was B. So we get this really nice kind of deformed shape, and I believe this is actually animated, because it's using the weight map formula. So we get something kind of organic, so keep that in mind. So what I'm going to do here is, I'll hit apply the modifier, and we get this kind of strange shape, and I'm going to add in a subdivision surface just to see what I get. I'll hit apply, and then I'll do another convert to dual mesh over the top. And we get this really nice kind of floral pattern, so what can I do with this? Well. This time, let's do a wireframe modifier and let's see what we get. Something like this. Something that would just be too difficult to model. It's kind of like a DNA strand, a floral DNA strand. I could probably lower it down ever so slightly and I can hit apply. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a subdivision surface over the top. Now, depending on your system, this might take a couple of settings. And then I get this really nice organic shape. So let me just show you another option Tissue has, and we'll actually use the tessellation option. So just to give you an example of how this actually works, so if I go to Mesh, I'll add in a torus, and I'll add in a basic shape, something like a UV sphere. Let me just move this over here. So what I'm going to do here is, I'm essentially going to project a torus on each of these faces. So I'll select the torus, and I'll select my source object, and I'll come up here to tessellate. So we have a few different options here. Now I'm going to use the quad option, and I'm going to leave everything on default just to give you an example. I'll hit OK. Now depending on your system, this might take a couple of seconds, and we get this kind of lovely organic shape. And essentially what it's done is it's tried to put a torus on each face. Brilliant. Now let me undo this, and let me give you another example. We'll go to tessellate again, and this time we'll do fan. Now fan is a radio array. Now the best way to think of it is it'll take the point normal, and then it'll do an array, a radio array around this normal. I'll just hit OK, that's probably the best way to show you. So you can actually see here what it's done. Let me just move this out the road for you. It's essentially taking the normal point, and it's done a radio array around the normal. And it's because we're using a torus, it ends up this really nice shape. Now that would be a nightmare to model. So that's pretty much the tessellation mode. Now there is different options, you can do component coordinates, rather than doing a bounding box, you can do a local or you can do a global. You can jump into direction, so you can take it from the normals or the individual faces. Uh, you can also use a weight map or a material ID. 
Now this is pretty damn powerful and there's a lot of options. So what I recommend you do is you go onto the developer's YouTube channel and you take a look at the stuff. He uses it for doing L systems, there's actually a lattice to form as well which is pretty damn good. That essentially projects what you're wanting onto the mesh. And I highly recommend it and for it being a free plugin, it's got to be in the toolbox. Do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, you know what to do. Peace.